We move forward to the Armed Forces Bowl between James Madison and Air Force JMU, a two and a half point favorite here with an over under 41. And it kicks off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ABC from Amon G. Carter Stadium, one of my favorites in the country in Fort Worth, home to TCU. Uh, we are not expecting uh, temperatures near zero like they were last year, which actually, believe it or not, of all the bowl games that we have, I know most of them are Southern, but you have the Idaho Potato Bowl, you have the Fenway Bowl, you, you have some above the Mason-Dixon line. This 2022 Armed Forces Bowl was the coldest college football game, uh, bowl, college football bowl game ever. And it happened in the state of Texas, which it's interesting. Um, anyway, JMU. Turned over the entire coaching staff. Like, everyone's gutted. They're all gone. They have a ton, ton of pieces in the portal. Now, supposedly, they're all going to play. But if they don't, James Madison could be without a dozen starters. That includes starting quarterback Jordan McLeod, who's terrific this year. A thousand-yard receiver, Elijah Sar uh, Surratt. Star running back Tyson Williams. Like, on defense, their superstar Jalen Walker is in the portal. And probably... He still landed on some All-American teams, but I, I believe he was deserving of, of first-team All-American. Jalen Green, uh, he tore his ACL in, like, week nine, and he had, like, 17 sacks. So these guys are not playing. Uh, they're also without their starting center, who's out for the year with an injury. So James Madison could be without a majority of their team. Air Force, they did win this bowl game last year. It's their third straight bowl in the DFW area. But they also lost their last four games after starting 8-0. Now, that kind of momentum scares me a little bit, or the lack of momentum, I should say. But all of those were without their quarterback, Zach Larrier, who Troy Calhoun believes might be able to play. If he plays, this is a very different team. And it's, it's weird to talk about a service academy that way, besides, you know, Malcolm Perry. Um, but usually it's not that case, but with Air Force, Zach Larrier, 8-0 when he, when he plays, 0-4 when they don't. Thanks for the reminder about last year's temps in this game, Brett. I had totally forgotten. And, yes, I do recall now, though, just that really, really cold streak that we had there in the Plains and even North Texas, as you talked about. So I had totally forgotten about that. Glad we're not going to be sub-zero again uh, for this bowl game. I'm also surprised, though, that that is the coldest bowl game we've ever had because, as you mentioned, we That's do have some – yeah. yeah, we have games in December in northern parts of the country – you would think some at some point would have been colder. Anyway, uh, good fact there. Uh, wasn't tracking on it. You just touched on this, though, Brett. Uh, after Week 9, these two teams – or excuse me, going into Week 9, these two teams were a combined 16-0. and 0. Um, After Air Force was – let me restart this. At, going into Week 9, these two teams were a combined 16-0. and 0. Air Force was ranked, and the only reason James Madison wasn't was because the Dukes were ineligible as they completed the second year of their two-year transition period from the FCS. From that point on, these two team seasons could not have been more different. Brett, James Madison, they continued their momentum through the end of the year with their only blemish coming in overtime against App State. The Dukes burst onto the FBS scene in 2022. I truly did not think they could do any better than they did a year ago. They proved me wrong. They won three and a half more games than I projected, which makes them number seven on my overachievers list here. James Madison also finished number seven on my list of power rating improvements from, from preseason to current, rising more than nine points in the power ratings during the year. Just a phenomenal year for James Madison, and I'm excited that they have this opportunity to compete in a bowl game because, as we know, that wasn't a given, given this transition window that you have as you make that transition from FCS to FBS. For Air Force, it looked like the Falcons were on pace to have their best team of the 21st century before a shock loss to Army was then followed by a shock loss at Hawaii and then two more losses to teams that ultimately competed for the conference title, of course, UNLV and Boise State. Ultimately, it was a season of what could have been for the cadets, and Brett, they ended up being power rated worse than both the 2022 and 2021 Air Force teams, at least by my numbers. My numbers, which again, don't account for opt-outs among other factors, like James Madison by about six and a half points in this game, pitting two teams that are on polar opposite ends of the forum spectrum, as you talked about. I've started to see this number creep away from James Madison. There were threes on the table. Uh, now we're down to twos. I don't know if that's going to continue or not. I, I, I think, like I said, the, the there, there's so much going in opposite directions here. You have the big-time motivation for James Madison, their first FBS bowl game. Uh, you know, In theory, they should have that. But I think Kurt Signetti leaving 
kind of takes a little bit of that away. And, like, there is the potential that the transfers just don't play. Be it some, be it most, be it all. I don't know. I mean, we're seeing guys that are announced to not be playing the day of, like we saw with Frank Harris and UTSA in the Frisco Bowl. We didn't know until, what, an hour before yeah. uh, kickoff that he wasn't. Not even. I think it's when he came out for uh, pregame warm up. So, like, are you going to roll the dice and be holding a JMU ticket and then Jordan McLeod and Jalen Walker and Elijah Surratt and, you know, all of them decide the day of that they're not playing? Like, I'm not I, – I don't have a JMU ticket. And if these guys do play, I believe JMU is is the right side. And they, handily so. Like you said, six and a half points. I'd take that even more uh, because of how they're playing and, and the motivation behind it. But I just – I haven't bet on this game because there's just so many unknowns that could change the day of mm-hmm. – that right now, the way it sits, Air Force is the only side that I would play right now. Just because you don't know. So proceed with caution. If all these players play, JMU's likely the right side, but I just, I'm hearing little bits all around the Twitter sphere and other pockets, like things like that, that these guys might not play. Brett, that's just good general advice for bowl season with regard to betting, <laughs> in my opinion. Proceed with caution. Like, that's just blanket statement, period, right there, exclamation point. Um, yeah, you talked about uh, Harris. We don't know. So proceed with caution is great. And, again, if at full strength, that's what my numbers would make this one. Um, I'm certainly excited, though, for James Madison, as I talked about having a chance to, to play in a bowl game this year. They did earn it.